Thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Visit omaze.com slash sly. One of the biggest reasons I bought an electric vehicle was so I would never, ever have to buy gas again. In fact, I haven't been to a gas station in three years since getting my Tesla Model 3 in 2018. I gave up gas stations and replaced them with charging stations. Ironically, charging is one of the biggest reasons why many people are hesitant to buy an electric vehicle. According to a survey from AutoList, two out of the top four reasons people don't buy electric vehicles have to do with charging the car. So in this video, I'm going to put an end to all the myths and explain exactly what the experience has been like to charge my car for the past three years. And I'll go over my total charging cost after 75,000 miles and compare that to what it would have cost in a gas car. Now, first off, keep in mind the cost of electricity and gas depends on the geographic location. I'm located in beautiful horse and bourbon country, also known as Louisville, Kentucky, so these numbers will reflect that, but of course they will be different depending on where you live. Now, when people ask me, where do you charge your car? I always ask them, well, where do you charge your phone? And they'll usually say, at my house when I'm asleep. And I say, exactly. See, one of the best benefits of owning an electric vehicle is completely looked over by many gas car owners, and that is the ability to charge your car at home while you're sleeping. With my Tesla Model 3, it's great because I can set it to automatically charge during a certain period overnight when electricity is at its cheapest, which is also known as the off-peak electricity rate. And when I wake up, my car has enough battery charge to satisfy all of my daily driving needs. So I never have to stop to charge my car during normal daily driving. Let me repeat that. I never stop at all for anything ever during my normal daily driving. It's quite amazing. So my total charging cost comes from two different categories, home charging and travel charging. Now the first cost we have to consider is my home charging outlet. My Tesla Model 3 came with a mobile connector along with a public charger adapter, a normal 110 outlet adapter, and a NEMA 1450 adapter. Now, if you drive 50 miles or less during your daily driving, then you can probably get by with charging on a normal electrical outlet, which on my long range Model 3 would regain about five miles of range per hour of charge. That would be roughly 60 miles regained overnight if charged for 12 hours. However, I drive over 400 miles a week, so I needed to get a 240 volt NEMA 1450 outlet installed in my garage in order to charge my Tesla Model 3 at a rate of 30 miles per hour, which can essentially charge the car from zero to 100% in about 10 hours. Unfortunately for me, my breaker box is about the furthest it can possibly be from my garage, so I had to hire an electrician to run cable alongside my house, under my yard, and into my garage, which cost me $1,300 right off the bat before I even got my Tesla. Now the good news is for you, I'm an anomaly, and my installation cost was way more expensive than the average. The other good news is there was a 30% tax credit from the total cost of installing an EV charger back when I did it, which allowed me to get $400 back, so my out-of-pocket cost to install a charger at home was $900. Again, most people can probably get it done for about $100 or less. Now to figure out my total charging cost, let's look at the Tesla touchscreen to see exactly how much electricity it has used so far. After 75,368 miles, it has used 18,656 kilowatt hours. But unlike a gas tank, when once the gas is in the tank, it stays there, charging a car is different because not all the power coming from the grid makes it into the car battery. Some is lost along the way due to heat and other factors, so the final amount of electricity that makes it into the battery is called wall-to-wheels efficiency. And although this is very difficult to know exactly what it is, based on Teslify, which is an app used to track Tesla charging stats for owners, it says a 240-volt Tesla wall connector can average 94% efficiency. If we assume 94% wall-to-wheels efficiency, we also have to consider phantom drain, which is the electricity loss when an electric vehicle is parked while not plugged into a charging outlet. So for example, every day for eight hours, my car is in a parking lot unplugged and it loses some charge over that period. Now I use the Tesla stats app and that says my Model 3's phantom drain is 0.3 miles per hour. So after considering phantom drain, let's assume the wall-to-wheels efficiency is a nice even 90%. That means the total kilowatt hours to come off the power grid has been around 20,728. Now, before we calculate my charging costs, I wanna first tell you about today's sponsor, Omaze. If you've ever dreamed of owning the most popular Tesla, this is your chance. 
Omaze is giving away a Tesla Model S with a beautiful matte granite exterior and cognac interior plus $20,000 cash. The Model S is the best Tesla out right now with a crazy 0 to 60 speed of 2.3 seconds and an incredible 348 miles of estimated range. This custom Model S has some special features including a carbon fiber wide body kit, 21 inch performance wheels with Omaze engraving, sports dynamic air suspension lowering kit, carbon fiber spoiler, blackout trim package and more. It even comes with Tesla's full self driving option included. For this giveaway, Omaze has teamed up with Give Power, which is a nonprofit that uses its solar expertise to power and provide clean water, food security, and light to regions in need. These water farms aim to provide a long-term, renewably powered drinking water solution for many living in dry conditions. Last month, Samantha from Montana was the lucky winner of a brand new performance Tesla Model 3 from Omaze, so be sure to visit omaze.com sly if you want to potentially become the lucky winner of this custom Tesla Model S plus $20,000 and to support a great cause. So the total kilowatt hours has been 20,728 so far, but not all of my charging has been done at home. My best guess is that I average about 2,000 miles per year for traveling on road trips, which means 8% of my total miles are when traveling and 92% is from home charging. To figure out my total travel charging cost, it's pretty easy because I've only spent $54 on Tesla supercharging so far. Now you may think that's really cheap and that's because it is. If you don't know by now, Tesla's referral program allows owners and buyers to receive free supercharging miles when a current owner refers a new Tesla customer. I've been lucky enough to refer about 1,400 people to buy a Tesla so far, and when that happens, each of us gets 1,000 free supercharging miles. Coincidentally, I have an insane 1.7 million free supercharger miles, which is the most in the world, and you may be thinking two things. First, Andy, why don't you donate some of those miles to me? Trust me, I would if I could. I've actually tweeted this to Elon, but unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. Secondly, you may be asking, Andy, why don't you just supercharge for free instead of charging at home? Well, it's mainly because charging at home is just so dang convenient. I literally just plug in when I park in my garage when I get home and I don't have to worry about traveling out of the way to a supercharger every other day. I'm not joking when I said how much I love never having to stop during my daily driving. I only use the Tesla superchargers as they were intended to be used, which is only when traveling on road trips. Plus, I don't want to take up a supercharger stall if someone on a road trip needs it more than I do. But the point is, there are thousands of Tesla owners that have gotten at least 1,000 free supercharger miles, so that's another benefit of owning a Tesla. So my traveling costs consist of the $54 I spent on supercharging before I got my free miles, but it also consists of some free charging at my destinations. For example, off the top of my head, here are some places I was able to charge for free during traveling. Uh, an Airbnb in Georgia, a parking garage in North Carolina, a parking garage at Purdue University, a hotel in Alabama, and a cabin in Red River Gorge. Now that's another advantage that not many gas car owners realize is that there are many destinations where you can charge your car for free when traveling. So I just wanted to explain that even though I have a ton of free supercharging miles, I only really use them when I absolutely need to during traveling. For home charging here in Louisville, my off-peak electricity rate is a little over seven cents per kilowatt hour, which is extremely cheap. So 92% of the 20,728 kilowatt hours has been home charging, which means I've spent about $1,350 on home charging so far. If we add my $54 supercharging costs to that, that means after 75,368 miles, I spent a total of $1,404 on charging. That is pretty crazy. To put that into perspective, if we consider a popular Tesla competitor from the same year, a 2018 BMW 3 Series that averages 28 miles per gallon and also requires premium gasoline, which costs an average of $3.47 a gallon in my county, to drive that BMW the same amount of miles, the fuel cost would be about $9,353. That's about $8,000 in fuel savings after three years of driving. And I do plan to keep my Tesla Model 3 for at least 10 years. So if I keep this up after another seven years, the savings could be close to $25,000, which could basically pay for a solar roof for my house, which would then of course allow me to charge for free for the rest of time. That is definitely an optimistic way of looking at it. But hey, that's another big advantage of an electric vehicle. It can be charged from 100% renewable energy, something you can never say about a gas car. 
Now to sum up my experience of having to charge my car for the past three years, it's sort of like going from toilet paper to a bidet. All the people who have used a bidet swear by it and will never go back, including myself. The people who haven't used a bidet before are a little hesitant to try it. They're scared of the unknown sensation, and it's a sensation, all right. But once you do it, you're like, wow, I feel so much cleaner and fresher, and it's much better for the environment. That's how it feels to charge an electric car instead of getting gas. What do you think about my total cost of charging? Did it surprise you? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more Tesla and tech videos in the future. My name is Andy. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Visit omaze.com slash sly.